In this video, I'm going to show you guys how I make my portfolio renders in Marmoset Toolbag. Let's get into it. I'm going to be using this Viking Axe. I'm going to use this Unreal 4 template for my material. And then I'm going to start importing my maps. If you textured in Substance, you're going to need to flip the Y channel on the normal map or it'll look reversed. Grab the rest of my maps here. And then for the occlusion maps, I'm using the same map for the occlusion and the cavity map. The next thing I'm going to do is choose a preset for my sky. You can choose whichever one you want. I'm going to use the indoor fluorescence because it gives a pretty clean studio vibe to the renders. And I'm also going to turn down my occlusion maps to somewhere around 0.8. I think they're a little bit too strong by default. And that looks a little better. All right, now that I've chosen a sky, I need to start placing my lights. All you do to place a light is click anywhere in this image. And you'll see a little light pops up and you can drag that around and it will sample the color and position from this image. So I'm gonna do my first one just right here on this light. And I'm actually gonna lower the brightness of the sky to somewhere around 0.5. And I'm gonna take the child light brightness and lift that up maybe around 7.5. And then I'm gonna hold shift and right click to rotate my environment around the model to get a good lighting angle. I'm gonna start with something around right there so we get a nice highlight on the top of the blade. Now I'm gonna go into the light itself and set the brightness to somewhere around 5.5. That looks pretty good, it was a little blown out before. And then I'm gonna go back to my sky so we can place the second light here. So I'm gonna add my second light. I'm gonna place this one towards the right of the image here because I wanna get a nice highlight along the back edge here of my ax. So I think that's a pretty good spot for it. I'm gonna go into the light and I'm gonna lower the brightness a little bit because I think it's a little too strong there, maybe somewhere around there. I'm gonna turn off cast shadows on all but the first light. I'm gonna go back to my sky and place in my third light. And with this light, my main goal is to get some highlights down here on these little metal pieces. But I don't want it to affect the rest too much because I kind of like the look I had going there. So I'm gonna put it somewhere around here. And I'm gonna go into my third light and turn off cast shadows. Then I'm going to go back to my sky and turn down the backdrop brightness. I usually like my backdrops to be pretty dark. Maybe somewhere around there, 0.037. And then I'm actually going to mess with this third light a little bit. I play with increasing the brightness, maybe around 0.8. And then I'm going to darken the color a little bit so it only really affects those metal pieces. Maybe right about there. Okay. Then I'm gonna zoom in a bit so I can get a closer look here. And I'm gonna rotate my environment around, see if I can get a spot that I like better. And we'll do something about right there. So now I'm seeing some harsh shadows in here that I wanna get rid of. And there's some on the back too. So the way we do that, is we go to our skylight, and since this is the only one casting shadows, I know it's the first light. And I'm just gonna come down and take the width and turn that up a bit. And that will soften out those shadows a bit. That looks pretty good. Okay, so that's all the lighting we need to do. I'm now gonna go into my render settings and turn on my local reflections, as well as cascades. I'm also gonna turn the shadow resolution to ludicrous and the cascade distance all the way up. And then I'm also gonna enable my global illumination. Kind of gives it some more believable shadows. I'm gonna drag voxel scene fit all the way up. And I'm also gonna enable my ambient occlusion within my render settings. And I'm just gonna leave it at the default settings here. Okay, so that's it for the render settings. The last thing we need to do is the camera settings. So I'm gonna go to my main camera and the first thing I'm gonna do is add just a little bit of contrast. 
I only raised it by 0 0.015, and that made quite a big difference. And now I want to bring some of these little details in this metal out. So I'm going to increase the sharpness to maybe point around 0 0.4, and that just kind of gives these little details a lot more definition. And then I'm also going to add a vignette with a strength of like 4.3. And then I'm also going to increase the softness a bit, maybe around there. That looks pretty good. I'm also going to add a little bit more grain than the default amount. We'll put it to 0 0.051. And this is looking pretty good, so I think we are ready to render. I'm going to come up to my capture and settings. I'm going to set mine to 1080 by 1080, I want a square aspect ratio, but you can set that to whatever you want for your image. And then turn the sampling up all the way to 400. Click OK. And in your main camera settings, you can turn on safe frame, and that will show you exactly where your render will be. I'm going to frame this up on the blade here, right about there. And once you have your shot framed up how you want it, you're ready to render and all you need to do is click on Capture and Image. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, drop a like and tweet me your renders at AlexTemplinArt on Twitter. I'd love to check them out. And I will talk to you guys next time.